So, you've bought a cheap motherboard, or, more specifically, one of these. And, well, the overclocking is just terrible. You can't get past 4.3 gigahertz to save your life, but what's the CCD overclocking people are talking about? Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So, like you, when I first got my motherboard, well, I'm really into overclocking, so I tried my hardest to get this thing up to 4.6 GHz, but to my surprise, it would get nowhere near it. And now, I knew the all-core wouldn't get near the boost, but I was hoping I could at least get, uh, well, within a few hundred megahertz. And, well, that turned out to just not be the case. And so what I ended up doing was, for a couple weeks, I just went through and I tried everything I could think of, and I finally came across some forums talking about CCD overclocking. Now, I've been sitting on this for a while because I wanted to make sure it was working right. I found it out probably over a month ago, but I've kind of just been doing lots and lots of different tests. I've seen a lot of 3900Xs being killed, so I want to make sure I don't put out a guide that's going to kill people's CPUs. So... I eventually was able to get 6 cores to 4.5 gigahertz and 6 to 4.325 gigahertz. So, what that means is that my Cinebench score, multi-core, absolutely demolishes the 9900K, and in single-threaded, it's faster than a 5 gigahertz 9900K, which is crazy. So, let's go ahead and get into the requirements before I go into the BIOS and show you what you gotta change there. So, for the requirements, you're gonna need Ryzen Master, MSI Afterburner, Cinebench R20, ADA64, CPU-Z, and a game that you can run at a high refresh rate. All right, now that we've gotten past that, the first thing we're gonna need to do is make some tweaks in the BIOS before we can do anything in Windows, so I will see you there. Unfortunately, I don't have a capture card, but I will have a decent camera to the screen, so hopefully it doesn't look too bad. All right, so you've made it into your BIOS, and the first thing you should probably do if you haven't already is enable DOCP. What is that? It's essentially XMP, which is what the speed is stated on the box you RAM, so you probably want to enable that if you haven't already. It'll give you a bit of extra performance, especially with Ryzen. Make sure to save and quit, and then once you have done that, and you're back in the BIOS and it worked. If it didn't, just make sure to pull the CMOS battery out. You know the whole deal. I doubt it won't work though. So you should be good to just type it in. But once it's once it's done, go ahead and go type in your CPU core ratio. You're just gonna type in probably 43 if you're using water. I can get 43.25. You might wanna type in like 42 if you're using air. Now, then you're gonna go over to your VDD CR CPU voltage, change it to manual, punch in 1.35, I can do 1.38. 1.35 is the max for stable 24-7 that a lot of people are saying, so I would just stick with that for now. Then you're going to want to go over to your Digi plus VRM and change it from auto. Start at either level 2 or 3 and then work your way up until you get a flat voltage in Windows. Once you've done that, you can probably go ahead into your advanced settings and then over to AMD CBS. And from here, go over to your global C states, change from auto to disabled. That'll make sure that it's stable. Once you've disabled your C states, go ahead and back to the main page and go to precision boost overdrive. From here, you probably want to change it to manual. Then if you have an eight pin, you can type in up to 284 watts for the PPT limit. If you only have a four pin, well, then you're out. Then you can only do 142. TDC, I typed in 120, and EDC, 220. You can go a little bit higher or lower depending on if you think it's too much being drawn, but that should be fine. The rest of the settings you can pretty much just keep the same. It doesn't, it really doesn't change anything at all. So, and then from there, you just want to go ahead and save and quit and get into Windows. All right, so once you've got that all loaded in, go ahead and boot into Windows and make sure that you have CPU-Z installed. Open that thing up, make sure that the voltage that you typed in into your BIOS is flat and that's what it's staying at. Now, if your LLC is too low and you start doing a load like Cinebench or any other program, a game, anything that stresses the CPU, your voltage will drop. It'll, that's why it's called V-droop, it droops down. But if you set your load line calibration too high, your voltage will spike under load, and that can actually be potentially damaging to your CPU. For instance, if you think that 1.4 volts, which is already really high, 
is fine for your CPU because your cooling is extreme. Well, you might punch in 1.4 volts, but if you have your LLC set to level six or something or something beyond that, depending on what BIOS revision you have, it might actually spike way above 1.4 volts and do some sort of damage to your CPU. So definitely when you're changing LLC values, like I stated earlier, start low, go high. Don't start high and go low because you want to find out a point at which it does not fluctuate. You just want it to be a flat voltage. So once you've checked, make sure that the voltage is flat. Go ahead and open up MSI Afterburner, check your clock speeds. So if your voltage and clock speeds look right, well, the next thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and make sure you have Cinebench R20 installed. And once you do, make sure to open it up and run a multi-threaded test. Now, running three of these in a row will typically tell you if your clock speed and voltage is stable. If your clock speeds are only at 4.3 gigahertz or 4.2 gigahertz or somewhere around there, and your temperatures are low, but you're failing tests, you probably just need to add 0.01 volts. So what that means is, for example, let's say you're at 1.35 volts and you're failing tests. Well, try 1.36 volts and then 1.37, and then 1.38, until you start feeling uncomfortable with your voltage. That's probably around the area that I'd start feeling uncomfortable going any higher. Higher than 1.38 volts, you better have some really, really good water cooling, or maybe even a chiller or something. Otherwise, you're simply not going to be able to keep this thing under 95 degrees Celsius when you run A to 64. But once you've run that enough times, and you've got it to a point where it's stable, you know it's stable, you got a good voltage going on, hopefully under 1.4 volts, and the temperatures are hopefully under 85 degrees, then you're probably good to go there. Run A to 64, if it's under 95 degrees, boom, you're 100% stable. All right, so once full stability has been ensured, you've run all your tests and you know it's stable, now here comes the fun part. So we're gonna go ahead and open up Ryzen Master. Let me go ahead and do that for you here. And once you have it open, looks like I already have it open. <laughs> and once you have it open here, It'll have you on the home screen, and for me, it's all bugged out, but for you, it probably will still be actually showing you the correct stuff, so don't worry about that too much. Now, what really matters is that you're going to want to go ahead and start a new profile. So for me, I just did it on creator mode, but it really doesn't matter which one you click on. Let's just do profile one, for example. So here you can see it'll originally have you on the default tab over here, but what you're going to want to do is move it over to the manual tab. Now, this way it's not gonna actually really change anything except for your clock speeds. At least that's what I've seen. Now, to be safe, you're gonna wanna change your CPU voltage to be the same as it is in your BIO. So for me, that's 1.381 volts. So that's what I typed in there. Now, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is click on the two CCD little red settings buttons there and that'll give you full control over the CCDs themselves when you're talking about clock speed, and you won't be touching the other CCD when you do so. So now we're gonna type in here what's in our BIOS. So I have 4325, not 3800, so let's do that. Type it in, hit enter, and as you can see, this whole CCD goes to that. Let's do it on both CCDs, 4325, type it in, hit apply. And as you can see, it didn't even make me restart for that. So now let's go ahead and make sure, check an MSI afterburner. Yep, it's at 4325 for the clock speed. So now what we're gonna do next is, as for me, I know that CCD zero is my good CCD. And I'm going to assume that for most people, that's probably the case. I don't have any actual evidence, but I would just guess that that's probably where your good CCD is gonna be. Now for you, you might find out that this is actually your bad one and you need to just actually overclock CCD one more, but let's start with CCD zero. So I have 4325 in right now and I know that if I go any higher on all core, it's just gonna crash in Cinebench. But what I can do is type in 4400 on one CCD and then hit apply and watch. There you can see in MSI Afterburner, it actually did increase to 4.4 gigahertz. So now there's nothing wrong going on. But what you really need to do is open up Cinebench one more time here. I'll just open up that way. And you're going to want to run this. Now, I'm not going to run it right now because it'll make a bunch of noise. My fans will spin up, but I know it'll work for me. If it doesn't work, you'll get the error. And now that means one of two things. Either you've chosen the wrong CCD 
or you do need to add more voltage. At, for me, I was actually stable at 4.3 gigahertz all core at 1.33 volts. I had to go up to 1.38 volts to make 4.5 gigahertz stable on the one CCD. So you might actually have to increase your voltage a little higher than you'd want to. I would say as long as you're under 1.4 volts, you should be good if you're on water. Now, if you're really nervous about it, again, the recommended um, maximum voltage 24-7 that clowns on the internet are throwing around is 1.35 volts. I don't know how much stock you put into that. Um, I would just keep that in the back of my mind. Of I would prefer to be at that voltage. I mean, you can tell when you go higher, it starts to become harder to cool. Seven nanometers is very dense. It gets very hot. It's hard to deal with. So if you do know that this is your good CCD though, like me, you can at this point then just continue to increase the clock speed and the voltage until either your temperature is too high, your voltage is too high, or you just simply don't want to increase it any further. At that point, once you've found stability, that will be basically your max overclock. And the great thing about Ryzen, the reason why I really like the CCD overclocking is it kind of knows what your fast CCD is already. So if you increase the clock speed on that one, well, that's the CCD that gets tapped by Windows the most. So you're gonna see the most improvement from it. So that means even though you're only overclocking half your CPU, you're gonna see more benefit from that than just half of it being faster. Because in reality, the majority of the tasks will actually go to those first six cores because it knows that that's your fastest CCD. So it loads those cores first, typically. So once you've done that, you'll be able to open up games, run them, and you'll see you can actually exit out of this thing. It'll stay open. As for me, I'm gonna open it back up here because I actually have a profile I'll show you here. Works at 4.5 gigahertz. I can just easily hit apply like that and boom, I'm up to 4.5 gigahertz. I've tried it with tons and tons of games, tons of applications, rendering, 8 to 64. But the one application I would kind of steer clear from at this point with just with how dense silicon is, the Power Virus program, Prime 95, I used to love it. I absolutely love it. But with these CPUs, honestly, it's a little unrealistic at this point. I mean, you can draw a ton of amperage and, and wattage overall for these CPUs on your motherboard if you want, and Prime 95 will do that. Is any application ever, 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 ever going to do that? No. That's not something you're going to put on your CPU. A load is never going to max the wattage and amperage out completely. It's just not going to happen. So... At this point, I'd probably stay away from Prime 95 and do A to 64 instead because it seems to be more reasonable. I mean, again, be careful. You don't want to be it like right on the edge of stable because someday that might not be stable, but it seems to be working good. So yeah, once you got that all figured out, there you go. You've got pretty much 4.5 gigahertz, 3900X, hopefully. You might have better silicon than me. You might get 4.6 gigahertz, 4.55. You might have worse silicon than me. You might only get 4.4 or 4.45. You just got to go through and test it. When you see guides out there that give you like, oh, you're guaranteed to get this clock. No, you're not. All silicon's different. So that's why I tried to make this one a little more lengthy. I want to try and make sure people are getting the best clock speeds they can on their CPU. And the best way to do that is to make a dynamic guide. So if that did work for you, go ahead and tell me in the comments. If you're having issues, let me know as well. This guide should be good for pretty much all motherboards, but as I stated earlier, it's more specifically for this X570 Tough gaming Wi-Fi board, so hopefully it worked good for you.